Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. I'm continuing my Mega Base Challenge, and today uh, we're going to be working on oxygen production. So we're going to be using an electrolyzer to create a self-powering oxygen production system. So it will not require any external battery power to run the thing because it will power itself off of its own hydrogen. So we're going to be using the electrolyzer down here, sucking up water. And that water is then going to go and it will feed a hydrogen generator. Now, this is a topic we covered once or actually a couple times before I was looking through my playlist, actually found out that a couple of videos were not in the playlist. Uh, so, yeah, believe it or not, actually, ha I actually have 68 videos already. <laughs> so the one I was looking at here was it was self-powering oxygen production and I covered that a couple of times and now if I look at this I might be able to find what page I was on for oxygen production from my sheet I'm trying to get an idea of how much how much I'm gonna get out of like a system like this well maybe not like that uh, there's a couple of different systems that were in this one there we go we can see the different systems there it's kind of small but that and then there was like a hydro hood system right I ended up building this one in the last super duper duplicate challenge and that system worked out all right aha uh -huh. sheet number 12. you see you guys wonder why i don't share <laughs> my my uh my giant spreadsheet it's because it's the most disorganized thing on the planet all right here we go somewhere in here is the secret answer i was looking for not the Hydra Hood, no. System 3, open. I know I make these videos, but I don't necessarily remember everything I say. Okay, so that is system number 3. See how I labeled it? It's like I knew what I was doing. So that, what does it produce? Oxygen, 163 kilograms of oxygen. Not bad. I could work with that. So, ballpark 150 to 200 kilograms a day of production is probably what I'm going to get out of one of these systems. So, let me go ahead and just plan this one out. I'm going to go ahead and put the electrolyzers up here on the top. I figure I'm going to have a combination of, of two different, you know, systems that are essentially going to be how I'm making oxygen inside of this base. One of them is going to be using algae. I'll progressively be digging up algae as I explore the map throughout, you know, so you get some algae there and everywhere, you know, and especially when you get into these biomes. Algae is one of those things that is just always, it's very abundant in the world. So there's no reason not to have part of your oxygen production be, you know, from algae. So an algae deoxidizer, it's not a bad option. If I have water, then the uh, terrarium is also a way to go as far as algae terrarium, as long as I got a lot of water, that's that's a more efficient use, but I don't really have a ton of that water stuff kicking around right now. So, clearly, let's go ahead and <laughs> throw an electrolyzer up here. So this will be where it's at. And the trick to these electrolyzers is that they have both hydrogen and oxygen that are that are coming out of it. And what you want to do is you want to separate the two and you want to separate it reliably so that the hydrogen goes up and it gets separated off all by itself and then the oxygen, you know, flows down. Or you can just do it in any other arrangement that you can find that works, but the idea is to separate the two. If you try to push the two into the same space, there's a bit of a, a weird thing that happens with the hydrogen and has a, a tendency to start to fight with the oxygen and delete a small portion of itself. And I'm not sure that's a bug that they've ever said that they fixed. So I'm doubting it's fixed at this point. So what I'm going to do though, that's a little bit different for those of you guys that have been following um, the series for a while now, I'm going to put these in series right next to each other. So there's going to be multiple electrolyzers that will then feed off to a couple of pools for hydrogen. So rather than just have one of these with the hydrogen bay right next to it, I'm going to have several electrolyzers with a couple of different bays. And from my testing, having this down here be all air tiles, that really allows this electrolyzer to operate more often because it's 
it's not building up a ton of pressure. So I will have my hydrogen chamber. It's got to go up here, and then it's usually going to be in this area. Aha, this is more what I was looking for. Okay, so like this. Yeah. See? Look at how nice and symmetrical that's going to be. Perfect. All right, so there's a portion of the game plan right there. Essentially, I got the hydrogen generator, the battery, a manual generator just to kick it off and, you know, get things running, and then a couple of electrolyzers that'll run there. The liquid system, I don't really want to run power all the way down here, all the way up there, just to kind of pump a little water into that. So this right now, this, this liquid pump is running off its own little manual generator and the battery. I kind of want to keep that stuff separated. I just think it's a little bit... A little bit cleaner, you know, so I'm not really going to worry about it. That, However, this system up here would have the ability to run that pump as well. So it should have, actually it should have a, a slight bit of excess power. Okay, one thing I didn't have, or I don't have, is a gas filter. That isn't necessarily always needed. And, you know, since we are doing the Mega Base Challenge here, I'll actually go ahead and go to the effort of creating a bypass for that filter when it when I come to that point. So you essentially, since this will end up all hydrogen at one point, you don't need to run the filter. However, in the early stages, you'd either have to pump a lot of gas through there or just run it through a filter, which is probably the right method as far as actually getting this thing up and running initially. All right, so there's been several comments about the food since that kind of came up a bit in the last video right there. So, a couple of the other gases that people are using here is filling their area with chlorine gas, which makes sense. I mean, <laughs> unless, of course, you really want to torture your duplicants. However, in the current build of the game, the chlorine gas does not torture your duplicants. They just can't breathe it. Um, in real life, I don't recommend it, though. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the other thing is carbon dioxide is really handy for growing areas. So... I know I'm using polluted oxygen over here, or a mixture of polluted oxygen and oxygen. Um, yeah, there's come some different, you know, uh, different gases that you can use for growing. I think, you know, carbon dioxide is one of those, and I think it's really effective for that. Um, and the other comment was a little bit lower. Uh, the problem with my new food storage area, or my desired area, I guess, uh, it's just that the CO2 gas flows down into the right and your system is set up to the left hand. Um, I think I had mentioned in the last video that I said I would just try to let this fill up. And you're right. I would probably have to go ahead and actually pump in carbon dioxide to that area. And that's kind of what I was thinking, even though I don't think I said it correctly. Okay, so here's an interesting comment here you should keep your hatches near a farm since I have a 33% chance to drop an extra seed which the hatch will then consume so you can have you know free coal in that regard uh, they might also consume mealwood but I guess I guess there's some comments saying that they won't um, and there's also other comments that we're talking about oh my gosh there's a lot of comments but one of them was let's hear this guy right here, rocking orc. So he has a setup here that has a lot of mealwood. So this mealwood is in carbon dioxide and it is no longer being harvested. So at this point it can just continuously kind of generate. And I guess you could put a hatch in there. The real advantage of doing this though, here is that that meal lice can just sit there and it won't go bad because it's in a sterile environment. So that's really handy. At some point, I think I'll try to make something like this as far for my farms. <laughs> the other recommendation was to set the pneumatic stores to open. Do they really slow down when they're going through a pneumatic door? I thought pneumatic doors were pretty quick. And this has to be set lower. I mean, come on. Why are you running on this so much, Dr. Camille? All right, as far as regards to the dropping of extra seeds, um, it is absolutely possible, right? The thing is they can't climb up ladders. So that's how you could prevent, you know, having hatches potentially 
eat up all the seeds in your mealwood farm. So you just kind of have them at certain levels so that they produce coal, but only on a, par a portion of your farm. So the other thing I wanted to try to do is I, I really want to look at this just a little bit better here. The temperatures that this operates in is 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. And in order to get everything here into one spot, I was thinking about sticking a coal generator in an area like this, right? So it produces the carbon dioxide that we are looking for. And then the coal is then fed to that. So I get, you know, I also get the food, I get everything I need essentially all in one spot right there. I did that at one point in the last base, but I was growing, um, I was growing the mushrooms and that was before they kind of changed how this farm system worked. So the coal generator only generates 45 watts of heat, which actually is not that much. So I might actually give that a try. I mean, that that might be a really good place to grow some mealwood, or at least a, an intri a, a better method, I guess. Ah, so here's the first share as far as somebody creating an oxygen purifier with oil, because oil is like, has a, a very a higher efficiency as far as using you know, that guy there, the aqua tuner to cool it down. I'm looking forward to exploring that a little bit more. I did do a, a video on that earlier, but the thermal conductivity or the thermal capacity, I guess, of that oil, it was a little bit different, you know. In before this update, it was, it was 10, but now it's, I think, 1.6. Still, that's quite high. Not to mention how cold you can get it. Okay, so another thing, says Murphy Plays, is that you could feed those hatches your polluted dirt. So that's another option. Okay, another question was, do I, am I going to play any other games as far as like on this YouTube channel? And there are some other games I would like to try and like to get into. I don't necessarily have all the time to make those series work, but I have potentially looked uh, maybe at Factorio and the other one was RimWorld. Those were two games that had a lot of parallels with this game that seemed like I might enjoy that game as well. Right now, I just don't have the time to cover all that. <laughs> and uh, I've also been playing other games uh, in my free time. Project Cars 2 has come out, so I've been I've been racing around in that and having a lot of fun. But, you know, nobody really watches racing games on the channel, so... I haven't really bothered to make any videos on that. Which is a complete lie. I totally made this video, I just haven't shared it with you yet. This section, though, look at this. The trick is to just dive into it and hold on. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Now, here's an interesting thing that I've been looking at here. As far as temperature, normally in the past, we've had a cold biome somewhere nearby. However, don't really have a cold biome. Everything around me, around me is hotter. <laughs> so, we might be getting back towards the the point of actually having almost excessive temperature at at some point in the game. Because I noticed this body temperature here is a little bit high. And that's probably because that light is on. So I could probably turn some of these lights off just to save myself from a little bit of heat. Alright. Do you really slow down going through the door? Yeah, you do. Okay, we can set this stuff to open. All right, just coming up on the finishing touches here as I plumb in the gas filter and everything. Plug in the power for that. There we go. We have a little bit of a vent for a high pressure gas vent. That'll allow me to sort out oxygen if it finds its way in here. All right, so there we go. Now, let me go ahead and turn this. We can slow things down. Turn the... Uh, Gas valve off. I will select this and I'm going to sort out oxygen. I could have set that up differently But now as far as the gas is concerned, I'll go like that And I'll just go straight into the hydrogen generator. I left a little bit of a manual airlock here just in case I wanted to get in I can lock it once I leave and this will be Going to be above one kilogram. So once it's above one kilogram, this gas pump will turn on. 
Now I can control this, and that's gonna, going to adjust just how much hydrogen is in this space. So you can kind of see how hydrogen is already at this top layer, and then right down here it kind of flickers between the two. And that's why the top of this electrolyzer is set right here. All right, so I'm seeing a little bit of hydrogen slip out of this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in one tile here once I get this thing turned on. Come on now. Enable the building. Somebody flick the switch. If I take a look at the oxygen overlay, looks like the base is doing really quite well. There's a couple of areas where things are not that great. Then again, I don't have a lot of gas tiles over there. So it would be a good idea if I did something like this. Right, so this thing's operating over here. So there's a high gas pressure. So it'd be a good idea to have it come in here and then start flowing around. So since this atmospheric switch here is like right at the border between these two gases, its pressure is always very, very low. What I can do here is I can actually click this to below. No duplicate has to go there and touch it. You know, and let it run for a little bit. So if I take a look at the gas now. Right, so it's mostly just pumping oxygen around at this point. Oh crap, and I got that one little spot. Luckily I can deconstruct that. Okay, so now this thing is only pumping hydrogen at this point. So I can go ahead and go back to that switch, turn it to above, and then the pressure will here will just start to build up. So at this point I can actually disable this building. And then re-enable this build, this one over here. Now this will pump the wrong element for a little bit. Now I could have, I guess, deconstructed that and worried about it, but we'll just subject our thing to a little bit of damage here and then just repair it. I don't think it's, I don't think it'll be that bad. So see our wrong element damage? Yeah, so hurt it a little bit, but not much. So you can go up there and you can just fix it. So you can see the gas pressure here is increasing you know, 700, it's, it's continuing to go up. And everything that I'm getting out of this is oxygen. So if we look at the oxygen overlay, you can see that it's just flowing out everywhere you want it to go, real nice. And everybody's idle, so that's not good. You know what that means? I need a little bit more research. I think next up though, I'm gonna focus on the temperature modulation here, because two things I need to solve, temperature, one, of my base, it's starting to get a little warm. And then the other thing is I wanna get this space Small scale uh, water purifier. That way, I think we might be able to handle just you know, clean toilets and things like that. Okay, so I saw this thing turn on for just a moment, and now it's flowing up and in. So I can actually scale this back to 100 grams a second. If I look at this hydrogen generator here. It consumes hydrogen at 100 grams a second. Now, there's been some discussion previously on whether or not throttling this to exactly 100 grams a second will make this more efficient or less efficient. Because sometimes when it turns on and off, it isn't necessarily providing power right off the bat. So there was some discussion of, you know, if it's doing this number, does, does it then charge the battery up a little bit more? Because there was a weird thing that was going on with my last video where it just wasn't generating as much power as it should have because we we're actually counting how much hydrogen was going in there but at this point we can see that this battery is staying full and here goes a little bit more hydrogen and there it goes so the battery is continuing to stay full so it's self-powering so long as you have water that is there we go okay everybody's got their own toilet again they were sharing for a little while there while uh, Dr. Camille didn't have a bathroom. Fleeing! No! Mm, very hungry hatch. I've got so many hatches around here, it's ridiculous. <laughs> They're just running all over the place. Escape key. Uh, okay. Finally took your advice. <laughs> this system up here is just working really good. Constantly. So, out of curiosity, let's go ahead and just disable all of my other buildings here just to see how much I'm getting in a cycle. Well, I mean, 
you know, in a cycle where there's oxygen all over the place already. But just out of curiosity, right? I just want to see what that number is. And it seems like the distribution of oxygen is pretty good too. I mean, there's not many low spots. And the places that are low, I've been curing with a little bit of airflow tiles. As far as the germs are concerned, they're all under control. Not a problem. All right, so I completed cycle 99 there. Let me go ahead and look at the reports. So yesterday, those two electrolyzers produced only 90.6 kilograms of oxygen? Really? I mean, they are bouncing off of maximum pressure, but it looks like they're running quite a bit. Now, I mean, that might have a lot to do with just how much oxygen is in this base. If you look here, it's 1,400 grams right there, which is pretty high. I've got a lot of oxygen floating around at this point. I'm getting a lot of research done, too. I also got um animal relocator and animal trap now. So in the next video here, I'm going to try uh, coming up with a, a coal generator so I can kind of get away from a lot of the power systems that I have. Not that I, I don't like it, but I'd like to have at least a power system that runs this area and potentially start to combine that with different plants I want to grow and feeding hatches and stuff like that. So kind of get those systems together. I definitely like that idea. And maybe something that's on the horizon here. Obviously, we got to deal with this natural gas at some point. But some chlorine and maybe these uh, balm lilies. Those look kind of interesting. I've never grown. I've never grown those before, so it would be interesting to see what that would be like. Because it requires chlorine, which is a little bit different. At any rate, guys, that's all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.